When most people think of an electric pickup truck, they think of the Tesla Cybertruck. But in fact, there was a pickup truck that came long before that, and it doesn't look like it was designed by a five-year-old. That was the Radar RD6, and it's now been updated for international sales. This is Inside China Auto, and this is the Radar Horizon. It's, it's actually still a Radar RD6, but we'll come on to that later on. Yes, this is the Radar Horizon, or to be 100% honest with you, this one's actually still a Radar RD6. The RD6 was the original model. The Horizon is the updated version. It's got a few cosmetic changes on the front, a few things on the interior, and a few changes to the powertrain. But it's about 95% the same car. So I'm still gonna call this the Radar Horizon review, even though we've got the slightly older version of this car. Radar is the Chinese name. Radar is the international name for markets like Thailand and Australia. Just to get that clear. But what is it? Well, it's a fully electric pickup truck built from the ground up as a fully electric pickup truck. So it's not a converted ice platform, which does give you some packaging benefits and also ride benefits. It means you get McPherson struts up at the front and multi-link suspension at the rear. It's actually quite a bit smaller than a Ford F-150, for example. I'll show you a picture on the screen of these two side by side. It's quite comical, the actual difference in size. But this is definitely more of a leisure or recreational pickup truck. So it's actually got a payload of up to 860 kilograms in the back there, which is not too bad, but it's not the largest in the world. Radar kind of aiming this car more at people who want to go camping, go mountain biking, take their motorbikes up into the mountains, do outdoorsy things, you know, surfboards, stuff like that. Not necessarily carrying sacks of sand around in the back of your truck, but you can do that if you really want to. So it's fairly conventionally styled. It looks like any, or any ordinary SUV, to be totally honest with you. Difference is you do get a 70 litre frunk in here and you get a 2.2 kilowatt, 220 volt socket in the front for plugging extra stuff in. 17 inch alloys, not the biggest in the world, but look, we do get big chunky side profile tires there because that does help you, of course, on soft and kind of loose surfaces. I mean, basically from this point forwards, it just looks like an SUV, a normal SUV. You've got your roof bars on the top there, chunky styling, big chunky door handles here, quite a high road, uh, quite a high ride height as well. And then you get to this part here, and this is where it kind of gets more exciting for those outdoorsy types. Because this is where you get all of your practicality at the back of the truck. You get an electric release tailgate there, which is nice and strong, so you can sit on there if you want to, do some fishing off the back of your truck, or of course just get your bikes and your paddle boards out and things like that. We do of course get a 1.525 meter long load bay here, up to 1,200 liters of storage there. We get metal hooks here and here as well so that you can strap stuff down if you want to. You can even convert this into a camper van if you really, really want to. Now, if you don't want to do that, you do get plugs back here, two 16 amp, two 10 amp outlets there, and two 12 volt sockets as well for plugging in all kinds of peripheries, like chargers and coolers and things like that. In fact, there will be some packages coming with this car that will give you options to take this car camping and you can plug them all into the back of this truck. We get pretty attractive lights at the back here, full width daytime running light there, kind of an X-shaped light graphic here, twin reversing lights as well. And this truck will also be capable of having a tow bar capable of towing up to two and a half tons. As I mentioned earlier, the most obvious differences between the RD6 and the Horizon come on the interior, where it becomes a bit more modern, a bit more fresh, a bit less utilitarian. So you, we've got rid of these big chunky handles and the dashboard and the doors. They're replaced by something a bit more streamlined and modern. We've got different screens as well. So we've now got a 10.2 inch screen ahead of the driver and a larger 14.6 inch screen in the middle that runs on the Galaxy operating system. It's a bit more slick than this one. You get more connectivity, more apps, so you can play more videos and things like that on there. Uh, and you can see them in kind of the, the right shape, not necessarily in letterbox shape like you get on the RD6. You also get, of course, an, auto, uh, an AI assistant as well that you can speak to. So you can talk to the car and ask that to perform certain functions. 
We get a few changes down here in the center as well. So the gear selector, which was taking up quite a bit of space here, is now moved over to the left side and gone vertical to make more space for a wireless charger on the right side. We've also got rid of this drive mode selector here. So you don't have that anymore. Now you've got a toggle switch down on the left side to switch between your drive modes. We still get only one and a half cup holders though. That's the, that's the downside. So not exactly great in terms of cup holders if you want to have lots of drinks in there. Overall, I would say the interior is pretty nice for a pickup truck. We've got a lot of soft touch materials up on the dashboard. Yeah, we do get some harder plastics on lower surfaces and up there on that kind of binnacle around the dashboard. But overall, it does feel quite soft. We got ourselves some synthetic leather on these big chunky seats. I do like the seats, they are quite comfortable. They are only six way adjustable for the driver, four way adjustable for the passenger. You can get heating and ventilation specified on them i believe on the max version of this car the only downside i would say is the driving position isn't exactly ideal that's mostly down to the fact that the steering doesn't have enough reach on it i'd like the steering wheel to come just a little bit closer so it feels a bit less like i'm stretching towards the wheel also the footrest on the left side is a little bit short so if you've got big feet like me your toes will feel like you need to kind of twist your foot around just a little bit. But overall, the visibility is pretty decent. I was, I've got my seat on the lowest setting. If you sit a bit higher up, you get much better visibility than where I'm currently sat. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's fairly practical. You get decent pockets in the door there, big space under the dashboard, only one and a half cup holders, as I've mentioned, but a little pocket in there that's also connected to your air conditioning so you can keep things nice and cool in there. You also get a glove box down here and a bit of extra space on the bottom there as well. We also get a 55 inch sunroof on this, so it does fold and slide underneath the glass at the back there, and you get a sun cover on that as well. It's a little bit loud in terms of operation, you can probably hear that, but that kind of keeps the sun out, keeps the cabin a little bit cooler in here. You've got physical controls for your ventilation down there, which is nice to have, you don't have to have everything buried on the screen. Overall, it's not a bad interior, in the front at least. Uh, in the back, it's actually fairly practical there. Now, before I sit down in the rear seats, I want to show you something here you can actually pop up these base cushions. So if you want to have like a tall plant in here or something, or you can actually get an optional storage area with about 70 liters of storage or something underneath the floor there, you can have that, which is quite a useful little feature, nice little practical feature for the back of this car. But I will step in now and I have to say, these rear seats are some of the most comfortable I've sat in in, rear time, in recent times, simply because you get space in every angle. Loads of foot space down there, plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom, and more importantly, even though you're in quite an upright position, you get full thigh support because this cushion is quite high up from the floor down there. So it does feel like you can spend a lot of time chilling out in the back of this car, which I'm pretty chuffed about, to be honest. I mean, what else do you get? You get rear ventilation, so you can also keep yourself nice and cool in the back of the car. You can get a 220 volt socket down there for plugging in normal household goods if you want to. You get twin USB-A sockets on ours down there. We get pockets in the back of the seats, pockets in the doors. We also get an armrest on ours with a pair of cup holders in there as well. So overall, it's a fairly practical back seat and surprisingly comfortable. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never driven a pickup truck before, never driven an EV version or an ICE. So I can't really compare this to any of those to tell you whether this feels utilitarian or not, or feels better than they do. So I'm just gonna tell you what it feels like to drive in general. And in all honesty, it's been really impressive. So I've come to my favorite crappy road here in Kunming. This is a one road where they've got concrete panels, they're all beaten up and battered, and it's a real test of how much the suspension can take. As you know, this is an EV from the ground up. So it's got McPherson struts on the front and multi-link suspension on the rear. So it should, in theory, drive like any normal SUV. And the reality is, it does. It's really, really good. It doesn't get phased by pretty much any surface. If you get a really big bump, you will get a bit of a clump through the cabin. But on the choppy roads, and we're gonna to get to them very, very shortly, you'll see that actually the ride quality is really, really quite good. It's quite, it's, it's impressed me a lot. And not only that, but also the handling. Also very impressive. You can throw this car around some pretty sharp corners and there's just no roll at all. I fully expected, here's some of that choppy road. Absolutely adequate. It's even here, really bumpy. You can probably hear it. Absolutely adequate. That's fine, not too bad at all. It's not quite as good as a Zika 009 with dual chamber air suspension. It's 
probably not even quite as good as a ZK007 without air suspension that is also a really nice handling car but I'm well impressed I mean you can throw it around corners it doesn't roll at all it stays totally level it eats up pretty much all road surfaces even these really bad ones and it drives really easily as well obviously it's an EV the steering is super light on this you can't adjust it in the system so it just stays super light which makes it really maneuverable it's uh, not great at u-turns simply because it's a long car so the turning circle isn't wonderful it's not the worst in the world but it's, it could be could be a little bit better maybe although i don't think i've ever seen anyone put rear wheel steering uh, tell a lie actually there is rear wheel steering on a cyber truck of course um but yeah not at this price point speaking of which i'm not actually sure what the price of this car is i haven't seen new prices for the radara horizon in china and certainly we don't have any prices for other markets yet i don't believe maybe we do i'll find out in a second but no i mean it drives really well it drives very easily the only thing that you can adjust on here is the brake regen so we've got ours on the heaviest right now if i lift off it's not particularly strong it doesn't really slow down that much most of the time i was driving around with it on the lowest setting and it's, it's barely even noticeable you wouldn't even realize that you had brake regen on most of the time but no i mean in terms of driving nice and composed it's easy enough to drive easy enough to position you don't get a 360 degree camera on this you just get a reversing camera and a and and parking sensors so it's a little bit harder to park it in in spaces than other cars but i mean you can see pretty much all the way to the back straight down the side of the car so it's not the not the most difficult thing in the world to park surprisingly now in terms of power and the drivetrain can't really give you an accurate picture there because i'm in a rear wheel drive version 200 kilowatt motor on the rear axle probably about 343 newton meters of torque if it's the same motor that you get on a zika x for example the new version of the radara horizon only comes in four wheel drive 315 kilowatts 594 newton meters of torque and i would suspect that's 200 on the back 115 on the front axle so i can't really tell you in terms of how it goes on the, the drivetrain in this one if you have it in eco mode sometimes you're pressing the accelerator down and you're waiting for it to move it's like come on come on come on i need to move i'm about to get sideswiped by another car i'm doing a u-turn in sport mode it's certainly a bit better certainly more punchy and a bit quicker in the dual motor version the all-wheel drive version which the new one will be it will do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.5 seconds which is quite ridiculous that's probably one of the fastest pickup trucks in terms of acceleration that's on the market today um, whether you can adjust any of that power or not i'm not sure you do get different modes in the new version so you can get things like snow and ice as well we only get comfort eco and sport on ours and hill descent control as well and i'm going to go and test that out after i finish talking about this stuff now but anyway battery sizes you get 73 kilowatt hour battery that's a lithium ion battery that will get you 460 kilometers of range on cltc or you get an 86 kilowatt hour battery which is what we've got that is a ternary lithium battery and that should get you 520 kilometers of range on cltc in the dual motor version in our version it should get 550. now let me give you some live testing of that so when i picked up this car truck sorry we had 505 kilometers of range on cltc and 34,998 kilometers so easy numbers to play with we're now on 35,177 so we've done 179 kilometers and we've used we're on 333 over there so we've used 167 plus 5 172 kilometers so actually we are ahead of cltc and that includes driving downtown driving in stop start traffic because it's tourism season here driving up and down the hills and around this lake where i normally drive and we're ahead of cltc i don't think i've ever seen that in a in a car before so when it says you'll get 520 kilometers of range on cltc you can say yeah i actually might do that it's even showing now 11.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that's outrageous <laughs> for a car as big and heavy as this it is doing incredibly well and i've not been driving around like a ninny i've been driving around like an ordinary driver 
and it's doing really really well on the uh, on the, the claimed range there can't quite believe how well it's doing it's marvelous so yeah when it says it'll do that it will um what else can i tell you i mean it's a little bit louder in here than than ordinary cars so you get a little bit of motor whine you can hear that on the rear axle a little bit of motor whine as you're driving around you get more road noise you get more noise from the outside when you're on the motorway not that it's super loud i mean it's still an ev it's not like you've got a big chugging diesel under the front making a lot of noise it's just you know it's it's still a utility vehicle it's not kind of made to be super comfortable or super luxurious but i mean it's certainly quite often quiet enough in here for me to talk to you and for you to hear me okay so you know i guess we're doing okay on that side of things so yeah it's i wouldn't say it's very i wouldn't say it's utilitarian at all it's certainly more basic than some of the luxury luxury cars that i've been driving recently but it's very accomplished and it's doing a cracking job but now let's take it off road see if it's any more fun over there okay so i have managed to find a bit of an off-road path that i can use to test out this car's off-road credentials a little bit i have also managed to find out the prices for you for china so the air version which comes with the 73 kilowatt hour battery is 181,800 RMB. I'll put the currency translations below. The air version with the larger battery, the 86 kilowatt hour battery is 22,000, sorry, 221,800 RMB. And the max version, which comes with the smaller battery, the smaller of the two batteries, that is 209,800 RMB in Chinese money. Now this car, does have this pickup truck i should say does have wading depth of 81 and a half centimeters unfortunately i don't know any rivers that i can drive through where i can really test that but i've got a, a semi kind of off-road track here where we can show a little bit of you know what it can do whether it can go up hills it's a fairly stable ride considering it's a bumpy road to be honest with you i think you can probably see from the different angles that i'm showing what it's like let's just test it on this hill which has got kind of kunming's famous red dirt on it and honestly, absolutely fine up there. That's in the rear wheel drive version as well. So it's absolutely totally fine with that. We've got quite a lot of ground clearance here. So we're all good there as well. I've got it in sport mode. I like to have it in some kind of climbing mode up here. I think there's actually a mountain bike track. I'm not 100% certain. But you see, floor the throttle through there and you get the traction control coming on. So there you go. That's the off-road section. I don't think I can go any further up here because I do believe it's a bike road, but there you go, does the job. So that's it for our review of the Radar Horizon or the Radar RD6 in reality. A vehicle that has honestly been a lot better than I expected. I expected something way more basic than what you get here. I mean, the on-road manners, certainly very, very good. The efficiency is excellent. Off-road, it's pretty decent as well, and it will be better with four-wheel drive. I think it's got quite a good cabin, actually, for a pickup truck. Very comfortable in the back seats, decent in the front, and much better infotainment, of course, in the new version as well. But of course, it's all about the practicality and having that frunk here with a charging port in there, a charging port in the middle, charging ports out the back, and of course, that massive load bay for putting things like bikes, tents, camping equipment, things like that. I think it'll stir up the market in the places that it's going to, like Thailand and Australia. At the price point it's coming in, should do very, very well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you do, thank you for subscribing. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up so more people can see the cars coming out of China to the rest of the world. And as ever, we'll catch you next time.